Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. I know I said Yogstoth versus Kane, but apparently that game is actually not really an interesting game, so I'm gonna instead do Arteries versus Kane, which admittedly is a lower elo game. But I warned about that last time, so it, I'm just right, rather than forgetting that Yogstoth is 2000 elo and actually very good. So, without further ado, it's gonna be on Ravaged. I have done of this map before. Very Starcrafty, main base, all plus 1.8s. Main base is considerably, well, it's like, has one extra metal extractor compared to most. And other than that, it's everything's clustered. You have clusters over to the south or north. You have clusters over in the center. You have these clusters over to the sides, which are typically taken surreptitiously because neither player really wants to bother defending from two fronts when they actually, okay, I'm, I'm lying because everything requires defending on at least two fronts, except for the main base. But yeah, that's players tend to take this on the sly. Yeah. And also, this map supports all factories. I think that's everything. I've said all the contractually obligated things to say about this map. Sorry, it, just, it comes up a lot, so if, if I miss something, I probably covered it in my earlier cast about why this map is the way it is. So Kane taking advantage of this factory's tendency to work for any factory, or map's tendency to work for any factory, going for jump bots, which is a very good choice given the cliffs, while Arteries, on the other hand, is going for cloaky bots, a solid choice in general. Cloaky bots are an interesting factory. They're very easy for a new player. They're kind of, I think I mentioned this before, I think they're kind of the skill gate factory. They're the factory that if you're new, it's really easy to get a lot of mileage out of. But once you get to the point where you're starting to deal with better and better players, there are pronounced weaknesses that can be easily taken advantage of. Because, like I said, you have your main Riot Raider and Skirmisher, and they're the straightforward ones. Like, they're the very basic Riot Raider and Skirmisher. They're pretty archetypal. And your Riot is also partially an assault unit. And you have an assault unit that causes paralysis. But in order to really be able to shine, in order to really be able to use the clicky by factory, you have to know how to properly use the sharpshooter, the tick, the hammer, and honestly I've not seen it, but I think the eraser could probably do with more use. And also knowing when to throw sides in here and there. Yeah, so it's easy to get the basics in this factory, but it's just as hard as any other factory to understand how to truly use the entire thing effectively. But Arteries is going for it. They are going for the basics, going for early glaives. That is very typical. Kane, on the other hand, going for a quicker expansion as well as going for quick pyros. The early puppies are a good choice against. I think it's Cloaky Bot Factory. Glaives die to pyro. Sorry, glaives die to puppies in one shot. Glaives die to pyros very easily. But they die to puppies in one shot. The puppies will typically win. The glaives, if they're lucky, can retreat or dodge out of the way, and the puppies will miss. And then the glaives get a few extra shots, and that's usually enough to kill the puppies before the puppies kill the glaives. That cannot be relied on. So effectively, one puppy per glaive, the puppies win. We'll see though, they are coming in, Arteries does have the, their glaives set up about the best way they could, and get got rid of one puppy, so that means at least one glaive will survive. Well, okay, until the pyro comes in, I should say. I should clarify. And one glaive does go down, not retreating away from that puppy. The other one was handled very nicely though, Arteries microed that pretty well. While Kane moving towards the center, being very aggressive, they know that they have the advantage, both in terms of the current material advantage and in terms of the fact that they have a bit more experience with the game. At least in 1v1. I haven't really checked Arteries history too much. Like, Arteries is not a player I, I see as being familiar, so I'm guessing that they are probably a team player. Like, typically, if I don't know what they do, it's because they do teams. And it looks like, actually, no, they've been doing quite a lot of 1v1. At least recently. Looks like they started to pull into 1v1. And then from there, they've developed into... Well, they've been playing 1v1? Yeah, it looks like they are they were primarily like 2v2. So small teams. A few big team games here and there, but mostly small teams. Yeah, 2v2, 3v3, that seems to be their thing. While Kane, on the other hand, has been playing a lot of 1v1. Also, Kane has started casting. Go watch his channel. It's it's still a little bit basic. There are still some rough edges, particularly with the user interface, but he's going to be fixing that. He's going to be making that all as polished as possible. So yeah, we have another, another caster. And it looks like it's going to be another regular caster like myself, so this should be very interesting. So at this point, for people who cast regularly either directly, like I do, or indirectly by being on other people's channels, we have myself, Sackdoth, Floris, and now Kane. 
So welcome to the club, Kane. He's, I think he's got a good future. I mean, he's he does a good job. Even just the first few casts, he's been like there are certain parts of his style that I think are better than mine. In particular, being able to focus on larger picture stuff, like being able to know when to focus on the small picture, being able to know when to focus on the larger analytical stuff. That's something they have down. That's something I'm, I'm going to have to have a bit more pressure to learn properly. Anyway, getting back to the small picture stuff, Kane making sure that Arteries does not get the center. Kane wants to have the entire center to themselves. They have taken most of it. Arteries, however, at the same time, has been expanding along the south side of the map completely, and they are running neck and neck. Both players are very even. Both players have also hit the plus 20 hump, though Arteries, or actually plus 30 hump. Arteries was using their commander. Kane, however, hit the plus 20 hump. They were not using a caretaker. That's... That is not good. Kane is also accessing a bit more as well, just in it, just having more economy. So at this point, the economy advantage has actually been arteries, just because they've been able to take more advantage of the production. Now, if arteries, the thing is, can arteries take advantage of this? They're using Rockos against Pyros, which, especially with the numbers they have, really should be Zeus. Oh, well, let me think about this for a second. This would be two Zeus. Zeus against Pyro. It's typically whoever has the larger numbers. Zeus beat Pyro one on one. Pyro beat Zeus in large groups, and Pyros, if they outnumber Zeus, usually win. But Rockos have a hard time hitting. However, Rockos are going to have an easy time hitting the commander. The commander needs to move back, and Arteries, are they going to go for it? They are going to go for it. They know the commander's there, and they are trying to take it. Now, Kane, they do have Pyros in the back, and Arteries being very careful. Like, Arteries is paying extreme... Oh, I don't know how close attention they're paying. They're, they're jumping around a bit. They're multitasking, but they're paying fairly close attention, making sure those Rockos are not getting... There, they are paying attention now. Like they, they are on fight. The rockers, I should say. No, they are not. They're on move. Where are they? No. No, they're on move. That's right. Yeah. That was that was arteries actually manually microing them, getting them out of the way of the powers. Unfortunately, not able to kill any and losing a couple in the process. And Kane's commander gets away. And now Kane has their economy set up, although they aren't building anything. What the heck is Kane doing? Like, Kane is still accessing. They're building economy up, but they aren't building any units. Oh, no, they're building units. Now they're building units. Now they have 25 metal into the factory, while Arteries has 30. And getting the sharpshooter, which is nice to see. So Arteries does know about some of the tricks of the factory. That's good. That's very good. But Arteries also just has a ton of... I mean, almost a dozen Rockos and a hammer. Because why not? Unfortunately, losing the eastern side of the map to a Jack, and Arteries has no units in position to deal with this, and the Pyros... Breaking into the Rocco lines should be able to take them out without any issue, and this is why the Zeus is the go-to option to deal with Jumpbot Factory. Rockos would be great against the Jack, though. The Jack would go down in a hurry to the Rockos. Unfortunately, they were out of position. They could not deal with the Rockos. Sorry, did not deal with the Jack. The Rockos were not where they needed to be. So that is the one thing Arteries is using Rockos where Zeus would do best. I mean, there are advantages, like I said, against the Commander, but otherwise, not really. And looks like Arteries going towards the western side of the map. They know that there is an expansion there. Kane, well, they know something was here. They know some of the expansion. They don't know if there is more behind. They don't know exactly what's going on at Arteries' base. But that is still a decent amount of damage. At this point, the players are fairly neck and neck. The only thing Arteries has going against them is the fact that they went for heavy Rockos. But they have the Sharpshooter, and that's, they need to be super careful with this. That cannot get hit by the Pyros. If the Pyros touch it, it's dead. Because it'll be decloaked. And Glaive's distracting the Pyros nicely, but the Rockos still not super able to deal a lot of damage. They're able to deal a decent amount of damage, but the Pyros did spot out the Sharpshooter. That's the problem. There we go. That Sharpshooter is unfortunately dead. Looks like it was killed by its own Rocco. Another Sharpshooter is under production, but it's going to be 20 seconds before that's up. I don't even know if the game's going to be able to last that long with the way that Kane is pushing in. Okay, it's going to last that long. Kane is retreating. Kane's not being that aggressive. But Kane is now taking the center. They are going for both sides of the center this time around. And Arteries, they've been trying to break down what they can. Most have been trying to set up defenses against that Jack, which Kane has not pulled back to retreat. Not sure what Jack... I don't know what that Jack is doing. I think Kane has just forgotten about it. Kane's so focused on these Pyros, they probably forget they have a Jack over in the east side of the map that they want to take care of. They want to get that Jack back to get repaired. But the Pyros are getting a decent amount of mileage. I mean, the Rockos are getting some stray shots in, which is useful for the Rockos, but still, they're losing a lot of their number. And we continue to see more and more Pyro... Oh, no. 
we're not seeing the factory, that's why. We're continuing to see more and more... Oh, and warriors. Okay, warriors are closer. They are a better option. They are a better option than Rocco's in this particular case. Although they are still a kind of risky option. At least they will, they will be able to block... Uh, so as much as you can block off jumping units, they will be able to block off the pyros decently well. But like I said, as much as you can block off jumping units, which isn't very much at all. But yeah, enough warriors. They'll be okay. I, Zeus is still the way to go. Provided you can get the numbers up, and arteries most certainly can. They have 35 metal being pushed into the factory. They can get the numbers up for Zeus. They'll get a Zeus every 10 seconds. Compared to how quickly they're getting the, the warriors, the warriors are once every 15 seconds? No, wait, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Warriors are 220. Oh, I see, because they're not... It's obviously not entirely in the factory. Yeah, so the warriors... They'd be building about as fast as Zeus's, but the Zeus's would have an easier time dealing with the Pyros. The downside, of course, being that moderators are more direct counter, but then again, moderators are direct counter to, Zeus, to, Ro to warriors as well, and that is not the counter that Kane is going for. Kane's continuing to go for Pyros so, and puppies. And once again, that sharpshooter gets spot out, but thankfully this time the warriors... Though many of them died, the ones that survived were able to get rid of the Pyros. That is where it's important. But the Sharpshooter, it gets away, it's on fire, it's decloaked, but it's not dead. That is very important, and Warriors continue to stream out while Kane has switched over primarily to Raven production. Arteries not realizing this, not reading it, not even... They aren't even seeming worried at all. No Razors, no Gremlins... No air switch of their own. I mean, it's 10 minutes into the game, and air switch usually happens at at least 6 minutes. Like, 6 to 10 minutes in is usually when air switch happens. And that's what we're seeing, is the Ravens coming in here. They are going for a comp snipe, most likely. 8 Ravens, yeah, they are definitely going for the comp snipe. This was a strike commander, though, so I don't know why... Well, level 3 strike comp. With 4,000 health, but they, that's gonna die. Arteries commander goes down, couldn't really do much about that. And that was level 3 commander. I can't believe I didn't even notice that. Mostly because there wasn't a whole lot on it. It was just level 3 for the sake of additional build power? Speed? I'm not sure exactly. I guess HP, really. Strike commander. It was not build power, because that's a poor con. Yeah, that was an odd thing to invest their money into. Arteries had the economic advantage, too. I guess they just wanted to avoid accessing when they didn't have the caretakers. But that's... That's what you do level 2 at most for, not level 3. Level 3 is... I mean, it wasn't a huge amount of metal, 2150, but that's... Compared to about 1500 for a level 1 commander, that is still another 2 or 3 warrior... Or another 3 warriors, another 2 Zeus if they were going to go for Zeus. But they are going very heavily for warriors. Kane would be well advised to go for moderators at this point, though the Ravens will do just fine, I think. The Ravens will be able to bomb out the warriors without issue. The Sharpshooter, however, being a bit of a pain, Artery is pushing back, making sure Kane does have to work for this victory. Actually, I don't know if Kane wins. Remember, I don't actually know who wins when I'm doing these. I used to know, I don't anymore. So, I have no idea who wins, but if Kane's gonna win, they're gonna have to work for it. However, the Ravens coming in here, bear in mind, Warriors need two shots to die. Yeah, they need two shots each. They have 880 health, it's just a little over what a Raven can do. But yeah, Warriors do not easily die to Ravens, as Kane has just found out. Losing all but three Raven- or no. All but three of that attack group. There was one in back and one being produced. All but three of the attack group just died. Because warriors. Warriors are powerful. This is what I mean. This is the right unit that operates like an assault unit and a little bit like an anti-air sometimes. Right, warriors, their main weakness is speed, but if they can get in, they deal a huge amount of damage. They just... You do not want to let them get in. Because they will just, just wreck up the place. They, there's nothing you can easily do other than skirmishers, which only win on account of being out of their range. The, although, unfortunately, they were out of position. Kane, Kane, nice timing there. Arteries were really bad strategic decision there, going or tactical decision, going for the western side of the map, but not seeing if Kane will jump in. And Kane's going to jump into the main base, and this should be game. I don't think Arteries is the way out of this. Kane. Just went for it. Nicely done. Right as Arteries went out of position. Like Arteries overextended their forces, and that was unfortunate. Because this is going to be the... This is the base gone. Arteries has some workers, I think. Yeah, has a worker. But their factory is now gone. Their main base is gone. They're, might, they might try to rebuild over to the eastern side of the map, maybe. They can get rid of the Pyros, but now they've lost all their production. All their military. They lost their commander a little bit earlier, too. And that was a lot of investment. They're dead. 
Oh, and now moderators are up. That's another thing, too. Sharpshooters obviously beat moderators, but they're still in a bad position. Like, Arteries is basically dead. That was a really well-played setup, too. It's just the problem going to the western side of the map at that point. They didn't see the powers coming in, and actually, I didn't either. They didn't see the powers coming in. They didn't account for the idea that Kane would have rebuilt their army. And as a result, Kane just took it. That was game. That was very decisively done. So that is going to be it for me tonight. I, like I said, I have stuff I'm doing this afternoon, so I, that's why I'm doing it early, and also why I'm doing it short. So I hope you enjoyed that. Short though it may have been, it was fairly entertaining, and a good demonstration of why it's important to keep your units in position. Try to keep a somewhat defensive position. Be very careful when moving out. Don't move out unless you're sure that your opponent does not have anything they can move in with, or at least that you can deal with it. One thing I noticed is that Arteries did not build a lot of static defense. They relied a great deal on mobile units, and that's... that is really risky. Because static defense at least buys you some time to be able to get units back into position. Slow units like slow units like warriors in particular. Moderators too, but that's irrelevant. Because that wasn't Kane wasn't one being attacked. Still, in that case, Kane was building a fair amount of static defenses, but even then, not very many. Ravaged is not a map that I know as people build a huge amount of static defenses on, except when they get to the center. Then they just they pile them on. The yeah, Arteries had a few lotuses over in the corner, nothing really in the center, nothing to deal with potential assaults just getting behind their units. They had defenses, they're worth building. They were not worth relying, I mean, they're a bit maybe too powerful in terms of how much you can rely on defenders, but they are worth building. They give you some leeway, they give you some breathing room. If you want to attack, you're at least sort of half blocking at the same time. But that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a good night. Oh yeah, and go watch Kane's stuff, because Kane's doing good work. Just starting out too, but yeah, Kane's doing a pretty good job. So watch Kane's stuff. The I guess I might as well link the channel in the description of the video. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.